Hey, what's up, guys? Back again with another video in the C++ series. This time, I'm going to show you how to work with variables. Alright, so let's go ahead and create a new project so we can uh, work on this. And, of course, we're going to use an empty project so we can practice typing the template that we learned last episode. And then click Next. And then let's give it a name, so we'll call it episode 3, um, variables, something like that. You can call it whatever you want, but that's what I'm going to call mine, just so I can keep track of what I'm doing. Oh, it looks looks like my location thing here was reset, so I'm going to go ahead and fix it. Uh, projects, there we go. So that should put the project folder inside of there, and now we're good to go, so click create. And now it's going to create the project for us. And so yeah, this episode I'm going to be showing you variables, which are very important to pro uh, programming, and especially C++ programming because they allow you to keep storage of numbers and all kinds of cool data and stuff like that. So yeah, we're done here, it's loading, I mean it's done loading I mean, so we can go ahead and create our file, so we'll go over to source files, right click it, add new item, and then we're going to create a new C++ file, and we can just leave it the name if you want to, so click add, and now it's going to generate that file for us, and there we go. So just to get started, let's go ahead and create our, our template, you know, so we'll do hashtag include iostream and then we need to do using namespace std and then finally we have our main function here so int main and then we'll open that up make some space and then at the very end we'll put return zero okay now let's output a message just to make sure it works so we'll do c out um, i like trains alright so let's put a semicolon there and that should print out for us so we'll click run and now it should do it and boom it says I like trains and it closes of course because we put return zero which is going to close it for us and we're good to go okay so now we know it works so let's go ahead and try working with variables and so um, variables are very important like I said they're you know basically a way for you to store numbers and um, all kinds of data like um, strings uh, booleans which are true and false values you can store decimal numbers you can store characters like symbols like anything on your keyboard will be considered a character pretty much all kinds of cool stuff okay but we're just going to stay simple for this episode. We're going to be showing you how to make variables and stuff like that, okay? So variables, in an easy way to describe it, is a portion of memory to store value, meaning that whenever you create a variable, you're setting a portion of your memory in your computer to have... It's basically you're allocating a space inside of your memory to store value, okay? So basically you're telling your computer to generate a certain amount of memory um, as like save it away for you to use as a variable space okay and like I said there's different types of variables you have an integer you have a float you have a boolean you have all kinds of stuff but we're just gonna stay simple for this episode I'm gonna show you how to create a variable and the most simple type of variable is gonna be an integer so that would be um, what we're gonna be using this time so it's called an integer and an integer is basically just a whole number value so yeah to create a variable you need to sp first specify what type of variable you're gonna be using so the type of the variable so like I said we're gonna be using integer so we'll put int right there so that stands for integer and now that tells the C++ that you want to use integer as your variable okay so once we specify the type after that we need to give it a name so name our variable and you can call it whatever you want I'm gonna just call it um, Let's see here, we'll call it Bob, so integer Bob. And then now we have created a variable, an integer variable of the name Bob, right? So if we want to leave it like that, we can. We can put a semicolon on the end telling the C++ that that's the end of the statement. But what you usually want to do is give it a value, right? So we can say int Bob is equal to, and then we can give it a value of five, for example, right? Because integers store numbers, right? So now integer Bob is equal to five. So that means that in your storage somewhere, in your memory, I mean, it's going to have a variable of Bob with the number of five. So why that's important is because um, now in our program, in the future we can call upon Bob anytime we want to so we can use the number five or use the or use the variable Bob anytime we want to because now it's stored inside of the memory right so if we want to we can print out this variable just to see what the value is so see out Bob okay now let's try that we'll run it here and here we go so print out five at the top here as you can see but you might have thought that it would print out Bob instead of five but as you can see here we did not surround it by double quotes which would make it a string we just have the, the name Bob which is the variable and C++ is really smart and knows that it's the variable we're talking about. Even if we click on this, it highlights both of them because they're both the same thing. They're the variable, right? So what it's going to do here is basically it's going to output or it's going to send the variable Bob into the output stream here. But before it does that, it's basically going to translate Bob into its variable type or I mean the variable value, which is going to be 5. So it's going to send the variable of 5 or the number of 5, I mean, into the output stream, okay? 
as you can see here that's exactly what it did it put the number five into the output stream right so that's basically how it works you know you could assign variables just like that so yeah that's just a basic variable we can you know do a bunch of stuff with it in this case we just output it to the to the console and the future will be using variables much more than that but let's say you change your mind somewhere in the program that you want to change the value of bob to equal something else right you can actually do that if you want to all you got to do is do bob is equal to oops not right there you can put a tab and tap it forward so now we can do bob is equal to and we could set it to a new value of like uh, 125 if we want to okay but just make sure you have a semicolon on the end so it knows that that's the end of the statement so now bob is equal to five right here in this point in time but later on in the program on the next line it's going to be 125 okay so now if we output it see out bob like that it's going to be 125 because right after that we assign it to 125 right so it says 125 and if you don't know um, the way code works or the way the c++ compiler reads code it reads it line by line so basically you can think about it is that int bob is equal to 5 so right here it's 5 but once it reads here where it reaches here it's going to be 125 and then that's why it's 125 here but right here, if we do C out, C out Bob, it's going to be um, 5, not, you know, 125. And as you can see here, it says 5, 125. But um, they're pretty, they pretty much just put the output statements together. So it's actually just 5 and then space 125. But basically what you want to do is so that you don't have all your outputs on the same line is you want to flush it, meaning that you're going to tell it to make a new line after you output something, basically. So you would do that with another thing right here called NL. That, means, that stands for inline. So after you output something, you want to put in line so that the next time you output something, it's not going to create it on the same line as the first output, okay? So we'll just do that for every output statement from now on. So in L, there we go. So anyway, at this point in time, Bob is going to be equal to 5, right? But once it reaches this line here, it's going to be 125. So once we output it again, it's going to be a new value of 125. So let's close this here, and then we're going to re try rerunning it now that we flushed it and everything like that. And now we can see that Bob is equal to 5 right here, but once it reaches here, it's going to be equal to 125. Pretty cool, right? So that's just an example of how you could do that. So let's go ahead and create a new variable. We'll call it Sherry for some reason. We'll just give it a name of Sherry. So we'll do int Sherry. And then we could set it equal to um, maybe a negative number if we want to too. You can do negative numbers. So we'll do a negative 2,000. So now Sherry is equal to negative 2,000. And we can print out that value just to make sure that, just to check and see if it's actually 2,000. There we go. So we'll run that now. And now we can see that share is equal to negative 2000. Pretty cool, right? But yeah, that's basically how you assign variables. But you can also assign variables, uh, multiple variables at one time. So watch this. You could do int, and then you could specify many variables at once. So you could do int a, b, and c. So what this line of code will do is create the variables a, b, and c all at once, okay? And they don't have to be single letters. They can be anything that you want them to be. So we can call it uh, Billy Bob, Randy, and uh, Lacey, okay? So it's going to create three variables billy bob brandy and lacy all in one time so right after that we can assign them if we want to so we could do billy bob is equal to blah 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 uh randy blah 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 and then lacy is equal to blah 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 right so that's pretty cool right we can create multiple variables at once and then if we want to we could print out the values of these variables but i'm not going to do that there's no need to and if you remember in math we can you know do math on variables and stuff like that like x plus three is equal to blah 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 we can actually do that so let's just go and create some variables here to do some math on so int a b and c and we'll say a is equal to five b is equal to six and then c is equal to a all right i meant to put this as six so now we can do c is equal to a plus b so we can assign a variable's value to equal another variable basically or the result of two variables being added together subtracted from each other all kinds of stuff right so we can do a bunch of cool math operations we could divide we could multiply we could do anything right so now let's print out the value of the statement so c out c and then we'll flush that okay so let's print that out and see what happens and if we did it correctly, a plus b is going to be equal to 11, right? So it should print 11. That's exactly what it did because, of course, c is equal to a plus b, and a is 5, and b is 6, so 5 plus 6, and that is 11, right? So c is equal to 11, and so we print out c, and there we go. So that's pretty cool, right? Hopefully you like that. Um, that's how you do some basic math operations. We could do some more if we want to. So we could do something like this. So int trump is equal to um, 1 million or let's add, let's make it 1 billion. I think that's 1 billion. So 000000000. 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, yeah, that should be 1 billion. And if we want to, we could add something to this. If we want to, we could divide onto that. Any Anything you want to, right? So let's go ahead and add to that. Or well, actually, we'll multiply that. So 1 billion times 5 is going to be equal to Trump. So Trump is equal to 1 billion times 5. So it should be t uh, 5 billion. So we're going to print out that value just to 
check it. Because sometimes you want to check and see what the heck you're actually doing, of course. And as you can see here, we didn't get 5 billion. We got a weird number for some reason, right? And that is because whenever you're working with an integer, that you have to stay within the balance of a certain range of numbers, right? So that means that you can't go over or under a certain number, like negative 1 billion or positive 1 billion. I'm not sure exactly what the range is for the integer, but I can show you next episode when we go inside, uh, you know, the numbers in depth and stuff like that. But yeah, just keep in mind that certain integers, I mean, certain data types are going to have um, certain bounds that you can't uh, cross, okay? So as you can see here, if you hover over this, it says arithmetic overflow. The, uh, the operation causes overflow at compile time. Use a wider type, meaning that we want to use a type that will allow a bigger number, right? But we're going to go over that next episode. Don't worry about that. So basically, just keep in mind the size of the number that you're using whenever you're working with integers and, you know, other data types, okay? So anyway, let's just change this to, like, something like plus 5 so we can make sure that it doesn't go over that number. Um, it should work. So, we get, yeah, we get 1 billion, uh, 1 billion and 5, it looks like. And then now we could do some other stuff to that number if we want to. So we do trump uh, is equal to trump divided by 5. So it's going to take 1 billion and 5 divided by 5, and it should set that equal to the value, or set that equal to trump. Okay, so there we go. So now Trump is equal to about zero, 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 zero. So that's about 200 million, it looks like. So that's basically what that did. Pretty simple. Um, but hopefully you understand what's happening here. We're just creating variables, and then we can do a bunch of stuff with numbers to those variables. And keep in mind that all variables are not numbers. This is just an example, okay? But what's really important here is how to create variables themselves, okay? And the last thing I want to show you is the rules that come with naming variables, because you can't name a variable actually anything. You can give it any word name, but you can't use certain characters and stuff like that, okay? So let me show you. Let's get rid of all of this crap here. And so the basic rules are whenever you're naming variables is that you cannot use spaces, punctuation marks, and symbols like the dollar sign, pound sign, all kinds of stuff like that, okay? But you can use um, like letters, right? You can use letters, you can use underscores. We can do something like this, int um, underscore bob is equal to 5. That's perfectly valid, but we cannot do hashtag bob is equal to 5. Oops, let's fix that. So we cannot do a uh, hashtag bob is equal to 5 because you cannot use symbols within a variable name. Likewise, you cannot use punctuation marks, like I said. So Bob, comma, that would not work. You cannot use a comma or punctuation mark within there. You cannot use spaces within a variable. So you cannot have that like that. That would be weird. But you can use uppercase numbers, or letters, I mean, uppercase letters. You can use int Bob is equal to 5. You could put numbers in there if you want to, so like that. But you cannot start it with a number. That's one thing you cannot do. You cannot start it with a number. You can only start it with a letter or an underscore, okay? And usually whenever you're naming variables, you do not want to um, give it a uppercase name unless it's a constant, I believe, in C++. That, that's at least, you know, true for Java, but for C++, I'm not sure. But basically, you want to pretty much name every variable variable that you have a lowercase name, just for convention's sake, That meaning, meaning that that's what most developers do. But uh, yeah, so we can do something like this. We could do Bob um, is really cool. That's something developers commonly do. It's called camel case, meaning that if you have multiple words within a variable name, you're going to give the first letter of each word a uh, uppercase number so that you can read it more easily, just so it's not all condensed into one word that's kind of hard, confusing to read. I mean, it's just convention. It's just what people do. You don't really have to do that. You can name it whatever you want, as long as, of course, you follow the rules. You cannot start it with a number, and you cannot have symbols within your, your variable name, but you can start it with an underscore and a letter, okay? But yeah, those are the basic rules. Hopefully that makes sense for you. Don't forget, I'll leave all the code from today's episode in the description below. So if you want to check that out, you could check it out. Bookmark it for future reference in case you forget anything. Because sometimes you forget stuff. You know, I do all the time. So anyway, if you have any questions about variables or anything related to C++, um, I'll be glad to help you. In the comment section below, you can ask a question. Or you can join our Discord. We have a Discord link in the description below. So make sure you join, join that. We have about over 100 members so far. So anyway, um, if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.